Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror mystery film, Dark Waters. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts on a dark and stormy night in a convent in the middle of an island. A little girl presents an amulet in front of a nun. The nun's eyes widen and she takes it from the little girl before running out. A priest on another side of the convent locks himself inside a chapel. A book with a drawing of a monster lay in the middle of the altar. The nun arrives in front of the chapel and pounds on the door, but the priest has already closed it, so she steps away. Inside the chapel, with the rain pouring hard, the surroundings are rapidly falling apart. Water surges in from another door, catching the priest off guard. The chapel's flooded, and the priest tries to swim around to safety. When he resurfaces, something slits his throat. The next day, the nun goes to the sea, hucking the amulet close to herself. She climbs up the rocks and stands before a cliff, still holding the amulet. As she gazes down at the rocks below, an unknown force pushes her from where she's standing. The amulet falls and is smashed to pieces, while the nun lays bloody on the rock below. A couple of nuns retrieve the pieces of the smashed amulet, and that evening they slowly and methodically stashed the pieces inside small coffin-like boxes. The movie jumps forward to 20 years later. Elizabeth is on her way to the mentioned convent. Her friend Teresa promised to sort things out at the convent, but believes she's not getting anything done. She thinks Elizabeth coming over would help fix whatever issue they're encountering. She also shares in her letter how backward everything is at the convent. No electricity and no comforts you'd associate with 20th century living. It's already evening by the time Elizabeth arrives at the village, and she notices a line of nuns carrying torches made out of crosses. They're marching down a field and then surround a larger cross that's burning in the middle. None of the other passengers on the bus finds this area. At the convent, while taking notes on a journal, Teresa senses something out of the ordinary. She goes to another room and grabs a cross, which she then uses to break down a part of a wall that easily crumbles before her. Without her knowledge, a figure in a cloak enters the room, grabs a knife that's on the table, and then follows her. Teresa follows the path she found after destroying the wall. She hears running water. The nuns are in the middle of a ritual. Three of them self-flagellate their back, while four others lie prostrate on the ground behind them. While exploring, Teresa finds one of the pieces of the amulet, specifically the piece depicting a beast. The figure in a cloak catches up to her and stabs her from behind. She drops the piece she's holding. Teresa screams, scrambling to get away from the figure. The nuns can hear her, but they continue with their ritual. The figure stabs her again and again. The water turned red with her blood. As the nuns are chanting, some of them look up and find Teresa's body lying motionless next to a stone figure of Jesus' nail on the cross. Elizabeth arrives at a ship captain's office, trying to convince him to ferry her towards the island where the convent sits. The ship captain refuses since it's raining hard and the water's dangerous. She adds more money to the table, trying to buy the ship captain. He asks her what's the hurry. The island's been there for a long time and won't disappear. He advises her to take her things and stay at the inn for a week and promises to ferry her then. Elizabeth insists that he takes her that minute. This time, the ship captain is offended, pushing her money away. He repeats that he refuses to take her since he's afraid of death. He tells her to come back next week and promises to even take her for free. Dejected, Elizabeth leaves. Outside, she comes across a man who claims he's not afraid of death and is willing to take her to the island. As they're sailing, Elizabeth notices another man hungrily tear into the fish that's on the boat. He eats them raw, practically feasting. When they get on the island, the nuns are aware, and they watch as she gets off the ship and makes her way to the convent. Sarah, a novice, meets Elizabeth and takes her to what would be her room while she stays at the convent. Elizabeth shares stories of England, and Sarah timidly admits she'd like to visit one day. While looking at Elizabeth's things, she finds the only photo Elizabeth has of her mother. Elizabeth discloses that her mother used to live on the island, but died giving birth to her. She tells Sarah that her father spent his whole life trying to forget about the island and her mother. A nun knocks on the door and informs Elizabeth that Mother Superior will be seeing her later. As her name would suggest, Mother Superior is the head of the convent. She's blind and communicates purely through a nun, who acts as her assistant. Due to the weather, they weren't expecting her to arrive that night, but Elizabeth comments that she likes to keep her appointments. Elizabeth's father died and has left everything to her, including the responsibility to continue the regular payment to the convent that her father had maintained for the last 20 years. She was unaware of it and wants to know why she should continue making the payment. They don't answer her directly, but give her permission to access the convent's library in their ceremonies. They also task Sarah as her assistant, as they deem her a good girl. 
When she gets back to her room, she finds a couple of nuns quietly packing her stuff. Elizabeth demands they explain what they're doing, but they remain quiet as they gather up her things. Sarah explains to her it's the convent rule that she can only use what the convent has provided. She can get her things once she leaves, but for now, she's left with a dress which seems to be made out of a burlap sack. Sarah also discloses that Teresa had left two days ago to attend to some business in London. Elizabeth knows this is a lie and asks Sarah to tell her what's going on, but Sarah admits she knows as much as she does. That evening, Elizabeth has a weird dream that she doesn't fully comprehend. She sees a locked door with something trying to get out from the other side. The next day, Sarah brings Elizabeth to the convent's library. She asks Sarah if she ever brought Teresa to the place, and Sarah clarifies that not everyone has access to it. Elizabeth goes through some of the books, while Sarah excuses herself to go back to her room and leaves Elizabeth to her research. Elizabeth goes through passages about a beast, which a group's trying to release from its prison by making an image out of it, and then power handed down to it. It also discusses that anyone who sees the beast would receive a mark of blindness. They'll see the true face of the beast and forever suffer it in their soul. Taking a short break, Elizabeth notices the shadow the torches are highlighting on the library walls. She decides to check it out and finds the line of nuns slowly making their way down the corridor. This time two of them are carrying a body wrapped in linen. She follows after them carefully to keep her presence quiet. At a fork road, Elizabeth takes the other path and loses track of the nuns. She ends up in a cavern with a painter in the corner. She's on a small bridge high above the painter and notices all the drawings the painter has drawn all over the cavern walls. She takes note of one particular image. It depicts Teresa's bloody body next to a stone figure of Jesus. Needing to see it more clearly, she leans too far and almost falls. She makes enough noise that catches the painter's attention. He's blind, but he attempts to search for Elizabeth through his nose. Elizabeth takes a step forward, and the small bridge gives out under her. The painter's getting closer, and Elizabeth steps back towards a door, where Sarah grabs her and locks the door behind them. Elizabeth starts sobbing, telling her over and over again that the nuns have killed Teresa. To calm Elizabeth down, Sarah takes her aside, and Elizabeth tells her what she had experienced since she left the library. She then accuses Sarah of being one of the nuns and probably helping them as well, which Sarah denies. She points out that Elizabeth needs to believe her since she's all she got and that she saved her from the painter earlier. Elizabeth proposes they tell the police, but Sarah reveals there are no police on the island and the boat doesn't sail until next week. But she has an idea of where they can start. Sarah takes Elizabeth up what seems to be a tower filled with feudal paintings. They talk about the painter and Sarah confesses that she's not supposed to know since only a handful of nuns have access to his quarters, while the rest don't even know the painter exists. She thinks they use the painter as some sort of oracle. This makes Elizabeth realize that all the paintings are visions. Elizabeth comes across a painting of two girls holding an amulet with the beast behind them. She points it out to Sarah and asks if she knows who the little girl is, but Sarah shakes her head. Elizabeth feels like she should know who the two girls are, but can't figure out why. Sarah excuses herself to get a lamp, since there's not much light in the room. Elizabeth doesn't want her to leave, but Sarah reassures her that she won't be long. While Elizabeth gazes at the painting, a nun enters the room and tries to kill her. She fights back and saves herself by opening a door that leads nowhere, grabbing hold of a pulley as the nun falls to her death. They go back to Elizabeth's room, where she shares a little more of her story with Sarah. She mentions she was born on the island and spent the first seven years of her life there, but doesn't remember anything now. The only thing she knows of that island is that her father made her promise never to go. That night as Elizabeth rests, she has another weird dream. This time the two little girls, as well as a nun, are nailed to the cross. It keeps coming closer and closer to her before it lets out a loud monstrous groan that wakes her up. That morning, Elizabeth sees the boat leaving the island. She enters a house and talks to a man to ask how she can reach the mainland. He shrugs. She asks about posting a letter, and he retrieves a bag filled with them, but warns her they haven't taken it for more than a month. She asks about Teresa and then pays him to take a look at the bag for Teresa's letter. She leaves with the letter and comes across an old blind lady who's embroidering an image of the beast. She senses Elizabeth reaches to touch her face and then calls her by her name. Elizabeth reads Teresa's letter, where she's warning her not to come and explains that her father was only protecting her. She talks about the amulet and how someone's trying to put it together again. It seems she was killed because she tried to stop them from completing the image of the beast. Elizabeth is having strange visions now that she can't make sense of, but feels like she should know. 
When Elizabeth gets back to the convent, Sarah tries to get her to open the door, but she doesn't trust her anymore, especially after Sarah told her the boat was leaving the next week when it left that day. She begs for Elizabeth to reconsider, but she has made up her mind and asks to be alone. As she's walking around the island, the man she talked to about the letters showed her photographs he found of Elizabeth's mother. In one of the photos, her mother was with the old blind lady who recognized her. She heads for her house. Inside, she finds more photos of her mother and the two little girls. She demands an explanation, but before the old lady can reveal anything, the nuns set fire to her and her house. Only Elizabeth escapes out. At the convent, Sarah takes one of the pieces of the amulet. It seems she knows more than she was letting Elizabeth on. A nun arrives, and Sarah pretends that nothing's amiss. The nun reveals the cross she's holding is also a makeshift knife, which she tries to use on Sarah. The scene then jumps to the nun on the floor, lying lifeless with cuts all over her body. Elizabeth escapes the nuns who are looking for her. She makes her way back to the convent and comes across the stone figure of Jesus, the same figure that she saw on the painter's mural of Teresa. She finds the last piece of the amulet there, the one that Teresa found. Some of the nuns bring a painting of Elizabeth to Mother Superior. She caresses the painting while muttering to herself. Suddenly, the painting turns from Elizabeth's image to the beast. The door to where the nuns are presumably keeping the beast starts to rattle. Some of them approach the doorway, praying while carrying their crosses. Out of the blue, the door flies open and one of the nuns screams in fear. While walking around the convent, Elizabeth sees a shadowy figure of a nun carrying a torch. She steps back in fear when another nun emerges from one of the rooms with a knife in her hand, intent on killing her. They get into a fight. Elizabeth successfully protects herself by grappling the nun and smashing her head on the ground repeatedly until she's dead. Elizabeth goes to the catacombs, still carrying the broken piece from the amulet. She tries to smash it when she finally starts remembering what had happened at the convent years ago. She walks deeper inside, ignoring the lifeless bodies of the nuns everywhere. She enters the doorway that contains the beast, but she finds Sarah, who tells her she's been waiting for her, and then refers to her as sister. It's revealed that their father had escaped all those years ago with Elizabeth in an attempt to stop the siblings from freeing the beast. When Sarah shows herself, we find that she's not completely human. It turns out the beast is their mother, the mother of eternal sorrow. Their father tried to cover up Elizabeth's true nature, seeing as she's the only one who resembles a human between them. But Sarah believes that this was all in vain. He can't hide Elizabeth's true nature, and neither can she. It's further revealed that it was Elizabeth's younger self who ran away from the beast, and Sarah brought the amulet to the nun out of fear. Sarah accompanies Elizabeth towards the beast and the amulet that laid incomplete before her. She places the last piece of the amulet. A nun is with them tied up on a cross. Sarah approaches the nun and retrieves her intestine through her stomach. She then uses the blood to piece the amulet back together, while Elizabeth feasts on the nun's intestine. Meanwhile, the beast breaks down the wall and awaits the completion of the ritual to set her free. However, after remembering her father, Elizabeth snaps out of the trance she's in, takes the amulet, and smashes it to pieces before running away. On the other hand, Sarah crawls toward the beast to join it. The movie ends with Elizabeth at the beach, wearing a nun's habit. She puts on a necklace, which is made out of a piece of the amulet, the beast's face specifically. She seems to be blind now, as her eyes are completely white like Mother Superior's. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.